On today's edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, how close were the Eagles to potentially trading for Patrick Sertain? We'll get into that. Who's the bigger threat to the Eagles in the NFC between the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers? Bye week takes all that and more on this Monday edition of Lockdown Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Go download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our promo code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Joined as always by Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase. We are wrapping up the Eagles bye week. It's officially Kansas City Chiefs week, the rematch of Super Bowl 57 next Monday night. The Kelsey Bowl, Hurts versus Mahomes, storyline central. We got you covered all week for that matchup, Gino, and that's going to be a, a really good game for sure. The Eagles still busy at work, though, getting ready for that game, and it sounds like, according to some news from 15 minutes ago, they're looking for some more linebacker depth, which makes sense. Nicobe Dean placed on injured reserve last week with that apparent Liz Frank injury. Sounds like they actually worked out Anthony Barr, who's a veteran, former first-round pick, everybody knows from the Minnesota Vikings, was with the Dallas Cowboys last year, so looks like Howie Roseman's still trying to add some talent for this run. Howie season is never ending, right? And I said, unless there's like this buyout period that we see in the NFL, which the Patriots, they released Jack Jones today. We'll see what happens with that. That's True. somebody that could potentially Slot be corner. an upgrade in, in your secondary. Howie is always trying to add talent to this football team. And there's a clear need at linebacker right now. But the thing is, this bye week, I can't wait to see the first practice report, Lou, where they're hopefully close to 100% healthy. Yeah. They've had this week off now. They can get right. I think Kansas City was also on the bye as well. So you're going to see both of these teams 100% healthy, hopefully. Two the quarterbacks. Totally did that on purpose. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, they set this up perfectly. Yeah. It's a great storyline. But I want to say one thing before we get into this week good teams. Do not seek revenge and count this as their Super Bowl, right? Like you have to treat this like any other week. You're just going out there and competing against a team that is very good and you have to figure out who you are. Because if you go in there and you lay it all on the line and like you take this too seriously and this is yeah. your Super Bowl, what happens if you meet them again? Like, are you going to yeah. do the same and thing? This is and... that Eagles team. I don't think they're. No, I don't. I don't think way. so either. And, you know, this is not the Super Bowl. So, I mean, the Buffalo Bills had this kind of situation where after the AFC Championship in 2020, they destroyed the Chiefs in Arrowhead in mm -hmm. 2021 in the regular season. And then, guess what? They go back there to the playoffs and they lose again. So, this isn't the Super Bowl rematch. It's a rematch of the two teams. I'm sure the Eagles will be extra motivated to beat this squad 100%. But yeah, I don't think they're going to get that into it, invested where it's like, this is the revenge game. No, the revenge game, if it was going to happen, is going to be in Vegas in a few months. Absolutely. I mean, that's the goal. And yeah. let's take a look at where this team is right now. They're eight and one. Coming into this week, they knew that that game against Dallas was huge. And the teams behind them, they made up some ground. You look at Detroit, you look at San Francisco, you look yep. at Dallas. And we're going to talk about Dallas. those teams being a threat to the Eagles in the NFC. Well, the biggest threat is just continuing to win football games. And coming into this week, I think we have realized that there are really four teams at the top of the NFC, which might be better than the AFC as it stands. And all the teams around you are adding talent. I mean, seeing Chase Young walk out there <laughs> for San Francisco. I hated seeing game. that. I know, it was tough. It was tough. But the Eagles, they have enough to get it done, Lou. And, and this is going to be a great test because Kansas City, we know how good the offense is. Their defense is playing lights out this year. They have really turned it around. They used to I be agree. like that Big 12-style defense where your offense is going to score 100 points, but they're it's also, also going to allow... Now. Yeah, it, Travis Kelsey said so. it's the best Chiefs defense that he's ever played with. So that goes a long way. And yeah, you know, again, it's not a revenge game going back to that point, but another loss. Like, I don't think it would get in this Eagles team's head, but I don't want to lose a Kansas, to Kansas City two times in a row. So I, it is a very important game. And as you mentioned, because all these NFC teams made some ground during the bye week, that's another that's the more important storyline for this mm. game is to stay up for that one seed so you have a better chance at facing Kansas City 
in Vegas. We'll get into some Lions and 49ers talk later on in the show, but Gino, we talked about Howie Roseman still looking around the league for talent. Well, before the trade deadline, he was big game hunting, it sounds like, and we mentioned this once on the show, but we didn't really think it was realistic. According to Mike Florio of NBC Sports and Pro Football Talk, it does sound like both the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers were gunning for Denver Broncos cornerback Patrick Sertain in a trade, kind of like an arms race. Neither one wanted the other to get maybe the best young cornerback in the game. Unfortunately, the Eagles were not able to make this trade. Denver held on to Sertain. But, you know, it does kind of make me excited that potentially this is a trade that could get revisited in the offseason. As you know, Howie Roseman, there's been rumors about things that he could have done, and then he ended up doing it later on. Like, not to compare it to 2017, but... We knew in 2016 he was interested in trading for Torrey Smith. Then what happens in the offseason, he acquires Torrey Smith. He also had some interest that year in trading for Alshon Jeffrey. The next year he gets Alshon. So they're going to need a young corner next year for sure with the way Bradbury and Slayer aging. It makes me excited, even though the trade did not happen, that how he has his eyes on a big-time young corner. I think you could take away a couple things from this, and they're all positive in my opinion. One, Howie Roseman is always looking, right? And that type of trade... so exciting, man. Could you? I wonder what he would have gave up. That's a, a discussion that we could probably have on like a, a bonus type of episode. Like, what oh, would yeah. you have given up for Sertain? But Howie Roseman, in my opinion, can make this trade in the offseason a lot easier. Because when we were talking about this, these type yes. of players that you're going to bring in that are looking for their second contract... I mean, you had to get to the deadline, which was the day before the trade deadline to get that contract done. So you would have had to have that contract done Monday before you could have even got that trade done on Tuesday. Sure. Go back in the offseason. We can revisit that. Another thing is, Lou, he is willing to play pay good football players when other teams aren't. There's maybe like two or three teams that are willing to take those chances. And there was a funny discussion uh within our locked on group chat when the Niners and Eagles were looking at edge rushers and people are like, how many do they need? Seriously? How many do they, do they need? And you're, that's, that's I what love that is. they just won't it, take like enough. It's is the not, cold. It, it's literally the cold. Yeah, war. It's the cold war. Like, <laughs> you're Russia. We're the United States. We need to get like as enough as never enough. as we can. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're saying we want Patrick Sertain. We'll go for it. And I like too, Gino, that he was willing to make a long-term move during the season. That's best at for a the position future. of need at a position, right, exactly of need. at a position of need. That's an important position. And even though it would have been kind of an awkward fit this year with Bradbury and slay, it doesn't matter. I like that. He said, forget that. Like Patrick Sertain might be the best young corner in the game. If we can get him, we're going to get him. Yeah. You have to take chances, right? Because yeah. if one position in the future, the immediate future needs an upgrade or some youth, it's got to be cornerback, right? It's and maybe the biggest one right now, I think. That's a that's a check for Howie Roseman because he is so self-aware of his roster, right? You, you see N'Kobe Dean come down, go down, let's bring in Anthony Barr just for a visit. Not on the same scale as Patrick Sertain, right? But he's always aware of where they can look to upgrade. And hopefully that isn't one of the positions that could come back to bite you in the long run. But I believe, Lou, that... After the Super Bowl come draft time, you better pay attention to those young cornerbacks that That's are looking for me. deals in this offseason. Even if it's Howie Roseman's coming. He's exactly. that shark in the water, man. He's Jaws. He's just looking for a boat, and whatever one is going to throw a line yep. down, he's going to take. Because if there would have been a deal where San Fran, I'm assuming, was trying to price them out of the market, if San Fran's not involved, I would expect Pat Sertain to have been in Philadelphia. And that's right? the thing. Who's more likely this offseason to revisit that trade? I would put my money on the Eagles. So, and again, mm -hmm. even if it's not Patrick, Patrick Sertain, I just like what this trade attempt represented is that what you said, how he's looking for a young corner. That could mean it's Jalen Johnson next offseason. It could mean mm -hmm. it's a first or second round pick that he finally uses on a cornerback. That's what I like about this trade as well. And, you know, I will say how he has had a knack in the past for going after players that, Maybe in the past he wanted to draft, right? And I think, you know, he wanted Devontae Smith that year. But I think he liked Patrick Sertain and J.C. Horn just as much in that mm -hmm. class. And if those two did fall, specifically Sertain, I think that would have been a real conversation for that team to have. Without a doubt. And it would have been a real discussion to have who are they going to take if both of them were on the board. I don't know. Because the thing about Devontae was, if you don't take him, the Giants take him. Yeah, right. Pat Sertain... Would he have been taken by Dallas? Probably not. Micah Parsons was the pick for them. Was PS2 going to be the pick for the Giants? I don't think so. I think you would have had Devontae Smith being a threat in your division, and you would have Probably. had Pat Sertain. But the good thing is, 
you can also revisit this moving forward. Because here in Denver, I know Cord- Cody Rourke over at Lockdown Broncos will say that Pat Sertain wasn't available. If I'm the new ownership group, I am pulling the plug on every. I'm done with Sean Payton. I'm done with Russell sure. Wilson. And I'm going to bare bones. And it's like, we need to build this yeah. thing in our identity. And if Howie Roseman is going to offer up two first round picks for Pat Sertain, Right, Lou, I'm paying the price. I'm bringing That's the, the bag thing. for Pat Sertain. From the Broncos' perspective, even if you're a rebuilding team, I've always said this on the show, Like, why would you trade one of your best young players at a premier position? But as you're mentioning, if the compensation is two first-round picks for a rebuilding team, that's like gold. You mm-hmm. take that for almost any position that's not quarterback. So I, I think it is something that they could revisit in the offseason. Love hearing the Eagles were in on Patrick Sertain before the trade deadline. Coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast, who's the bigger threat in the NFC to the Birds? We all had time this bye week to watch the Lions. The 49ers will throw the Dallas Cowboys in there as well. We'll get into that discussion coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Today's episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. For me, that's Eagles Bills and just couple weekends Thanksgiving coming up game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase you can see the view from your seat before you buy them so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive all in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps they're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets in 2023 and heading into 2024 take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use our promo code in all capital letters locked on nfl that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms do apply again create an account and redeem the code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Guys, Lockdown is kicking up our coverage with Lockdown NFL Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Lockdown will go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time on every Lockdown NFL YouTube channel, including our own. Host Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, Kyle Krabs, they'll break down every game on the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, your betting angles, and more. Plus, get the in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country who know these teams better than anybody. Find Lockdown NFL Kickoff Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. All right, so the Eagles had a bye week on Sunday, so we had time to watch all the other good teams in the NFC. I was trying to watch if I think any of these teams are great, Gino. All of them had some pretty convincing wins. The Lions won in a really fun shootout against the Chargers. That's how Los Angeles, I feel like, is going to be for the rest of time. Uh, The Dallas Cowboys dismantled the New York Giants. The San Francisco 49ers surprisingly blew the doors off of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And so I started to think about this from an Eagles perspective. Like, okay, the Eagles are the one seed. Those are the three teams we've been saying all year. And, you know, to the respect of the Seattle Seahawks, we can throw them in there as well. They also won on Sunday, so they're 6-3. and three. Started to think about, like, who are the threats to the birds in the conference? Do you know, when it comes to, like, I'll say first, who's the bigger threat to the one seed, in your opinion? And then who do you think is the bigger threat to the Eagles when it comes to getting back to the Super Bowl? Ooh, okay. Because I think think that's that's the fair way to to look at it, right? Because records doesn't always show who's a bigger threat. No, without a doubt. And I'm going to say right away, the Lions are probably the bigger threat to get the one seed currently because they're 7-2. and They play in a a division which isn't so great, right? Mm -hmm. San Fran, you still have to worry about Seattle in that division as well. But when it comes to the biggest threat, I think it's got to be San Fran simply because that defense is just so freaking good, man. It, you it's mentioned so it earlier good. in the show, man, Chase Young. That changes a lot. <laughs> yeah, like your your second line is just as good as Philadelphia when it's Randy, Gregory, Javon, Kinlaw. And, I mean, you could toss whatever rotation you want, and, they, and they're just as good as Philadelphia. Right. It's going to come down to the quarterback play. Do I think any quarterback in the conference is anywhere near Jalen Hurts? Absolutely freaking not. The guy is playing out of his mind right now. But I have two takeaways from this weekend when it comes to the biggest threat for the Eagles. One, if Kansas City doesn't make it from the AFC, I'm confident the Eagles can beat any other team in the AFC. That's what I'm confident in. 
No, I do kind of agree with that, Gino. Yeah, for sure. Number two, I think the NFC is going to be super weird when it comes to the playoffs because you might get the Cowboys, or no, not the Cowboys. You might get, let's say, San Francisco playing against Josh Dobbs. And it's like, what is that Minnesota team right now? And who's going to come Dobbs out of the like North? MVP, and, dude, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, Dallas might play the team that's coming out of the NFC South right now. And you really don't know what's going on with any of these divisions outside of the East because the West is a mess. The South, nobody has any idea. The North, I mean, your guess is as good as mine behind the Detroit Lions. Yep. It's going to come down to the Eagles not beating themselves and just hope, hoping that the injuries don't come back to bite them because San Fran has a great defense. I think Detroit has a really good underappreciated defense. Seattle's got a good defense, and all these teams can score points. All these That's teams a are point. a threat to score points. I mean, San Fran could put up points. Seattle could put up points. Look at what the freaking Detroit Lions did with Jared Goff yesterday. Yeah. But it comes down to quarterback play, Lou. Let's not over simple. No, not make it too overcomplicated. 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 It comes down to yeah, QB one and Jalen Hurts, right? Exactly. I I couldn't have said it better myself. I think the, I wrote the same thing down. The Lions are the bigger threat to the one seed. I think mm. from a talent perspective, because of the roster, because Detroit has some talent, but overall, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying they're like exceeding expectations, but mm. they are not as talented as the Eagles. They are not as talented to me, even as San Francisco. I no. honestly even think Seattle might have more talent than Detroit. Mm -hmm. Detroit is a very good, respectable team, a very well-coached team. They have an underrated roster, but yeah, I agree. San Francisco is the bigger threat. I would even say for the Eagles, because of how Dak Prescott plays against this defense, I fear Dallas a little more than Detroit when it comes to our chances of getting back to the Super Bowl. But again, I completely agree with the quarterback point was my main takeaway is Although I do think San Francisco would be a bigger threat from a talent perspective, Dallas gives the Eagles problems. Detroit is 7-2. and two. I just personally have a hard time fearing any team. Not saying I don't respect them. Not saying they couldn't beat the Eagles. But I don't really fear any team, regardless of how talented they are, if they don't have an elite quarterback. And are there moments where Jared Goff looks elite? Sure. He looked elite on Sunday. Are there times Brock Purdy looks elite? Yes, he has looked elite at times over the last two years. Dak Prescott as well. But can they can, can they hang consistently with Jalen Hurts if he is on? And I think Jalen Hurts is guaranteed to have a certain floor of performance every single game, whereas sometimes Purdy can have a game where he's useless, right? I think there's mm -hmm. games where Goff can be self-destructing and Dak Prescott too, and it's kind of like a 2017 NFC Championship situation where – Case Keenum just ran out of magic. And I don't think Jalen Hurts is capable of running out of magic because it's a that's how good of a player he is. I think with these teams, you could even say this from Seattle's perspective too, with Geno Smith. Like there's times where he can blow the doors off of a defense, but there's also times where he is not an elite again, the elite quarterbacks, the difference between good to great is the greats do it every single week to a certain degree. And that's what I think the Eagles have, and those teams still do not. Okay, I'm just, I was doing this exercise yesterday and I'm so glad we were talking about this because I was sitting there and I'm thinking, all right, it's a divisional game in the playoffs, yeah. right? You get the one seed, you play Seattle. Is Geno yeah. Smith going to outduel Jalen Hurts? No. That's what I'm saying. I just, is, I can't is Jared Goff going go to the, go to Lincoln Financial Field in the middle of January in an right. NFC championship environment? And beat Jalen Hurts. And to their I respect, they may not have happening. to. They may not have to. I mean, they have Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. They have a great offensive line. I'm not saying right. these teams have no shot at beating the Eagles in different ways. But that, again, well, you're right. Like, do. We lost to the Jets, We lost to Zach Wilson. Right. You can lose to anybody exactly. in this league. But if Jalen Hurts is on his game, sometimes that most of the time requires the other quarterback to be just as good mm -hmm. in the playoffs. And I'm totally agreeing with your point. Yeah, I just I can't see it. The the team that, honestly, of the three, I fear the quarterback the most, and it's, again, comparatively speaking, is Dak Prescott. Right. He's the, he's the one I could see them, like, if they're just getting into a number. boat race, yeah. it's just going to be him and Jalen rowing away. Like, neither team's playing like defense. Like it was Sunday. Yeah. Who's going to get to 35 points first, and, and right. that's most likely what it would come down. I'm I'm 100% with you, Lou. It's like, yeah. from a team perspective, San Fran, 100%. You have all the weapons on offense. You have a, a great mind calling the plays right but you played a very similar team like that not as good of a defense but in Miami and I keep looking at those teams the same way I'm excited to see that San Fran game because it's going to be a great benchmark but I'm with you Lou 
The biggest threat at quarterback, I would say, is Dak. The biggest threat from the one seed is Detroit. The yep. biggest threat when it comes to overall talent perspective has mm. to be San Fran. Perfect way to categorize it, I think. And those are the top three teams. And then you throw in Seattle. But overall, I think the NFC in, entirely is the Eagles conference to lose. And it's mm. got a t- they got a tough schedule coming up, but they have those tests coming up against these really good teams. They play actually all of them except for Detroit before the playoffs do come around. So more bye week takes coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. LOE today is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. If you don't know what FanDuel is by now, I'm going to I'm going to clue you in here. It is the biggest sports book in America. I, I, seriously, if you just turn on the TV, you're going to see a FanDuel commercial. And it's cool that they're the number one sports book in America. And they're also our official sports book here at Locked on Eagles. I've been sports betting for years, and there is not a app that I use that has been as good and treated me as friendly as FanDuel. And why is that? Well, they're always giving away bonus bets all of the time. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money in line bet. So you bet the Eagles to beat the Chiefs next Monday night. All you have to do, you put in code locked on when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on, or you go to the app, put in that code that I said locked on, and you put in a $5 money line bet and FanDuel will give you $150 back in bonus bets. If you're an Eagles fan and you're listening in Philadelphia, I would say bet the Sixers too because they are hot. Bet Tyree Maxey to be one of the better players in the year scoring buckets. Just continue to bet all the Philly teams only at FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, Eagles fans, we're wrapping up this Monday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, closing out the bye week. The Eagles 8-1, and one. they have the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night next week. We will look to that matchup tomorrow. We've got crossover Thursday as well, a Wednesday show and Friday. Five episodes for you this week, getting you ready for that game. Actually, a Monday show too, so jam-packed for Eagles Chiefs. But, Gina, we had time to watch some NFL football this Sunday without the birds playing, and Kind of just take a look at who the Eagles are competing with in the NFC, but also the AFC. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier in the show. Like, outside of the Kansas City Chiefs, is there really a team that you're like, oh, the Eagles, this is the biggest threat. Can they really hang with that kind of team? And I don't even think that about the Chiefs. I mean, I have to because of Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey, but even the Chiefs don't look like the same team from last year. The NFC, the NFL entirely, you can say the NFC and the AFC, my takeaway from Sunday was just, it's a lot of good, but there's not a lot of consistently great in this league right now, where it's almost like it's the the sports version of Mad Max Fury and just chaos, I feel like, in that movie. And that's what's going on in this league right now. I mean, look in the AFC entirely, how many teams are six and four, five and five, four and six, you know, seven and three, they're all within a game or two. It's just it's an unbelievable race. It's gonna make it very entertaining. But nobody outside of the Eagles and maybe the Chiefs, I guess you could say, are really separating themselves. As I said before, I think the NFC has some of the better teams, and they might have four of the top five teams in yeah. the entire NFL. Like, they right don't now, have the better quarterbacks, serious. but they have the better teams, yeah, which is surprising to me. Because if I look at Kansas City, I'm looking elsewhere, I'm like, I just watched Joe Burrow lose to the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud, who's yeah, doing Stroud's pretty like an MVP good. Candidate. I mean, the, yeah. the NFL is crazy right now. And Pittsburgh has six wins. How? How does Pittsburgh have six wins? Somebody explain this to me. While like being I'm five years old. I think every game offensively. I mean, <laughs> did you hear what LeBron said about that? He's like, oh yeah, see? he called the Lakers the Steelers of the NBA. Yeah, and he also said that Pittsburgh has been <laughs> outgained and outscored in every game, and okay, they still well, have <laughs> at the time it was five wins. Typical like, LeBron. Oh, I think that math lines up there, LeBron. But <laughs> looking elsewhere, Lou, it's like. The teams that you thought were going to be great. We'll see what happens with Buffalo tonight on Monday Night Football. But for sure, I mean, Miami, you already beat. So you check them off. You, you right. probably have a, a little, I would say, bit of an advantage over them. Mm-hmm. And then you look elsewhere and it's like, dude, where are the, where are the good teams? I where- was going to say Baltimore is the second best team in the AFC, the biggest threat to the Eagles. And they blew that giant lead to the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland yeah. looks like a unit, but look how inconsistent Deshaun Watson is. 
it's all over the place, man. It, it's Jacksonville fun, looks say. like a dog water against the good yeah, football team. Yeah, that was team. disappointing for Doug Peterson to get that badly outplayed because that was kind of a test for them. Like, are they a true contender or are they mm. like the the Lions or Seattle of the AFC? And they kind of confirmed that. Yeah, the AFC is just the battle of midway, like quite literally, like so much mid. Yeah. It's like who's going to finish at five hundred and, and be the the three wild card teams well, look in at this the NFC division right wild now. Card race, it's kind of the same thing. I can't believe how good Josh Dobbs looks, and suddenly Minnesota is like in pretty good control of that final seed at six and four. I mean, you're you're going to have to probably win eleven games to get a wild card spot in in the NFC right now. Most likely. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be four teams probably competing for that those three wild card spots. If you think about it, Dallas, you're going to look at. I mean, nobody from the South, obviously, but in the West, you got one of Seattle and probably San Fran is going to be in that competition as well. And then you have Minnesota, and it's like there's probably one other team that might sneak their way into that conversation. But in the AFC, it's like you. It, it could be Pittsburgh being the four seed in the AFC and. Yeah. Would that shock you right now because of the no. way things are going? I, I I don't get what's going on over there, but the Eagles just got to handle their business in their conference because, I mean, even if Kansas City loses, they still have quite the margin mm-hmm. to continue to go out and get that one seed being seven yeah. and three they would be. If the Eagles drop this, they're only one win over the Detroit Lions right now of being separated via probably a tiebreaker. I think it helped put things in perspective on Sunday about the Eagles' struggles this year, their quote-unquote ups and downs and the inconsistent issues they've had on both sides of the ball. When mm-hmm. you watch the rest of the league, it does show you, oh, the Eagles have actually been the most consistent football team in football, and it's why they're 8-1. and one. I also have to say another thing about this league. There are so many bad quarterbacks. There are so yeah, many bad it's, quarterbacks. It's and really bad. Yeah, I, I count I my totally lucky stars yeah. every day. Every day that Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie have been on the same page since I, I was at the game when Donovan McNabb tore his ACL and Jeff Garcia had to go into the game. It goes back. We've had this discussion on these airwaves time and time again, but just looking at even Zach Wilson with one of the best defenses you'll Ugh. ever see in the NFL. Or Atlanta's throwing team. out there. Oh, you know, Taylor, Heineke again, and, Taylor Heineke. Oh, it's I mean. just, it's even Gardner Minshew didn't look good <laughs> yesterday and Tommy DeVito. Who's uh, the Raiders quarterback? I grew up as a Syracuse guy, and Tommy Uh, DeVito is an embarrassment to the position. I'm so sorry, Tommy. It is ridiculous. He's going to open a great New New Jersey deli one day, but, man, it's just – there's look. Hey, Sam Howell might have looked like one of the better quarterbacks that we watched yesterday. This is the thing, man. I love football, and I'm one of the biggest diehard NFL fans of all time. But there are moments where I'm sitting there on a Sunday, I'm like, man – Sometimes there's more bad football than good. And there is most of the time more bad quarterback play than good. So just count your lucky stars as an Eagles fan that they might have the best one, if not top three, and they don't have to. I mean, I couldn't imagine being a Giants fan right now watching Tommy DeVito or no. being like a kind of a contender or a playoff team throwing out like Zach Wilson. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, imagine if the Eagles had as good of a defense as the Jets and – like, they could throw up Marcus situation. Mariota. That would be yeah. something that you could probably win with, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but Zach Wilson can't. He can't do anything over. That's got to be right so now. frustrating to know you have the roster and you don't have the quarterback. That's again the most frustrating position to be in in sports. And I feel like there's so many teams like that right now. The Cleveland Browns paid their guy all yeah, the, the guaranteed money exactly in the world. That. They're just like the Pittsburgh Steelers. The only difference is Kenny Pickett's on a rookie deal, and Deshaun Watson is. They Bad. $200 million fully guaranteed, but he, I can't believe they made that comeback the other day. But yeah, I think that's another takeaway is the quarterback play in this league is just all over the place. <laughs> the night before I'm watching Caleb Williams go against Bo Nix, two guys that yeah. are potentially going to win the Heisman and might be first round picks. And I'm like, there's maybe 13 guys that both of these dudes could start over in the NFL tomorrow. Even the morning game. I was angry at myself for waking up and attempting to watch oh, the Patriots look, Colts. I'm like, why did I? I'm going outside. Mac I Jones has a job. Why, like, what are we doing, NFL? Look, we got to figure the point this now, thing out. I love football, but I'm not going to watch football just for the sake of watching football. If it's not entertaining me, I'm turning the TV off. I turn that game off pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was just the battle of average yesterday, man. Just you go terrible. from a first game that goes from Gardner Minshew and Mac Jones to a primetime game between Zach Wilson and Aiden O'Connell. Ridiculous. Why do the Eagles have the most watched games this year, Lou? Because people yeah. want to watch a good quarterback. Because they want to watch a good football. product of this sport. Yeah, 100%. Oh, unbelievable. Interesting stuff. We'll get into Eagles Chiefs coming up this week, the rematch.
rematch at Super Bowl 57. Four more shows coming your way right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to our everydayers for listening and watching Monday through Friday. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.